is Mike Chen, my last day here in Vietnam. I'm in the town of Rakia, and this is a really special place for one of our team members, Brenda, it's her hometown, and we are actually at her uh, grandparents' house right now. She hasn't seen them in a decade almost, so obviously really emotional time for her and her family. But they also prepared a really awesome homemade feast for us, and they kind of invited us into the homes to, to see them cook. So this is gonna be a very homemade, traditional Vietnamese uh, meal that we're, we're partaking here. And this is grandpa. Hi, grandpa. He's like over 90 years old. This is all of uh, Brenda's family. Asians all have big families. Oh, my God, um, all coconut for us. Oh, wow, that's all for us? Yeah. Whoa, that's a lot of coconuts. This is the snakehead fish. <laughs> snakehead fish, look at this. It's a really popular fish here in Vietnam. I haven't tried yet on this trip. This is a cobia fish, really pale looking fish. And those are fish patties we're gonna fry later. And check out their cooking stations. Look at this. This is old fashioned. Everything is uh, charcoal. So I guess the grilling is gonna happen right here. So whole family is rice farmers. Can we check out the rice patties? Everything is ours. Wow, look at this. Little lily pads. Lotus flowers, my favorite. There's fish in here. We have a graveyard. The thing with uh, Vietnamese graveyards is this, and it was explained to me by a tour guide. Vietnamese families, they tend to bury their relatives really close to their homes so they can like uh, keep a close watch on them. Also, the spirits of the relatives would look over the families themselves, and the spirits of the ancestors would look over the family as well. So that's why, you know, in the backyard, literally, it would be where the tombstones are. That's Brenda's family's rice field. That's cool. That must be hard work. So we're gonna start cooking. They're cooking the fish right now. Just whole fish just going on there. Scales and everything. Oh, look at, what? Whoa, that is a massive, scary looking fish. That fish has cold eyes. That's probably why they call it a snake fish. So the whole fish is being grilled, like no scales removed. Vietnam is like the first country I came to where I had fish where the scales left on. Auntie number eight is supposed to be the best cook in the family. And the fish patties are going into the fryer. And this is the auntie we actually met in Saigon and she's preparing the fish fillets. That's all for the hot pot. The fish is, I guess, done grilling from the bottom and now it's on its side. My uncle is chopping off the coconuts. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Wow. I feel the love in this coconut, you know what I'm saying? This whole family is just full, like overwhelmingly filled with love. I, I feel it, you know, I'm just like, he's happy, like whole family's so happy to see her. Reunions are always so special. This is our lao or our hot pot, and she added some salt, sugar, and she just added those bags you saw. That was coconut water, and then a bowl of vinegar. So I'm thinking this is gonna be like little sweet, little sour, extremely delicious. That's where our fish fillet is gonna go in. Check out this fish. It's completely charred on one side. If you look at the face, it still looks scary. Basically, the entire fish, nothing done to it, throw on the grill. It's as simple as that. A couple of the fish pancakes are done. The hot pot is a brewing. Can't wait to try this out. If I caught that fish, I would throw it back with some free fish food. Uncle is, is tossing another one of these snakehead fish on the grill. Three snakehead monster fish. I'm both terrified and hungry. Auntie number eight made these fish patties and she wants me to try it right now. How do you say it? delicious again? Nyang? Nyang? Yeah. It's like a, like a really bouncy fish cake. It tastes like fish and maybe a little pork mixed in here. In China, we often judge like how good a fish ball by how high it bounces. It's supposed to have a really chewy texture. You guys see how clean and beautiful that meat looks? She's like my favorite person ever because as, as I'm holding this plate eating, she's putting more patties on my plate. We all need an auntie like that, we do. I'm not so ridiculous as well. I'm not just saying this because it's Brenda's aunt, but seriously, if I was served this at a restaurant, yeah, I'd come back the next day. So that's what it used to look like. You do see a lot of herbs in there. I see maybe some scallions, some garlic. If this was in a burger form, it'd be like an awesome fish burger. Ain't no flies were invited to this party. They don't get a bite. Before we eat, there's something that, uh, uh, we should try. Vietnamese durian. Jen's been waiting for this for like a week. It smells less stinky than, than I remember. Sounds good. It actually smells kind of good. I don't know whether because I, I've been eating so much durian that I'm kind of developing some sort of uh, I mean, immunity to towards towards the smell. I heard Vietnamese durian is different. Yeah. Cheers. Sure. <laughs> Probably the best durian I have. You know why? It's so good. It's not that stinky. The smell it is a bit pungent, but it's not nearly as pungent as like some of the other ones. Best durian I've ever. Right? I agree with you. I'm just gonna go finish. All right. Thanks, Jen.
They also want me to try this. This is called ban e. It looks like a rice wrap. They say you can only get from this city here, not in Saigon. And you dip it in some sesame seeds. It's sweet. The sesame seeds are, are a little salty, and that gives it a beautiful sesame flavor. The inside, coconut shaving. Also, mumdi. And what I like about all these ingredients, they're all ingredients that, as you chew, its flavors just release more and more. So Uncle, he's not scaling the fish. He's just taking out some parts that are more charred and more burnt. I think what's happening right now is that this fish is literally being steamed inside like its own skin. Wow, look at that. Look at that fish meat. Whoa. You know that? Oh, that oh, is didn't, didn't. beautiful. This is the snakehead fish. You can see all the guts, everything is still in here. Look at this, just squeezing a little bit of my chopstick. You guys see how juicy this is? And I'm just gonna take a piece right here. This fish doesn't look like it has a lot of bones. I see the big rib right here. That's about it. Look at that piece of meat. That is beautiful. This is fish at its purest form. No herbs, no seasoning, but no fishiness whatsoever. It's such a beautiful, clean flesh. You can taste the smoke from the charcoal. Vietnamese cuisine, gotta have some fresh herbs, lettuce. Take a piece of the fish, gonna dip it in some tamarind sauce. Put it on my lettuce. Let's just add another piece here. Fresh herbs go on. Give that a roll. That's beautiful. This timber sauce is awesome. Sweet and sour, spicy with the herbs. It does absolutely transform the fish. The fish on its own is already really good. And like I mentioned, no fishiness whatsoever, which surprises me because nothing is done to the fish itself. There's no seasoning outside, no herbs on the inside. It's just grilled as is. Well, with some lettuce, a little herb, you get that nice natural crunch. Probably alongside the steamed fish and Cantonese cuisine, this is one of the most naturally delicious fish I've ever had. No joke. The meat has zero fishiness. Also, I got a little piece of the outside scale because it added sort of a, a slight charred bitter to the fish meat, which give it a little more texture, and that added more dimension to this fish. And I just want to say again, this is a great sauce. Auntie Number Eight just informed me that the hot pot broth is ready, so she wants me to have a taste. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm calling her Auntie Number Eight, this is very common in Asian families where we call the aunties by the order of their age. So like, the oldest auntie will be Big Auntie, and then she's Auntie Number Eight. The broth is very, very clear. It literally looks like pho broth with some ingredients inside. It's got a lot of vinegar in here. That's a good thing because I love my vinegar. This is so interesting. I've never had a hot pot broth like this before. It's almost like boiled apple cider vinegar. The vinegar taste is really pronounced, but at the same time, it's balanced out by, by such a beautiful sweetness. And then everything calms down with, with just that hint of coconut water. This is gonna be awesome with that fish all dipped in there. All right, auntie number eight is dressing the fish in the cuttlefish right now. She added in some pepper, salt, sugar. All right, hot pot broth is ready. Going into our hot pot. I feel so like fortunate to be here because look at the spread. This is like really different than, than like a like a Chinese gathering. Yeah. Like a Chinese family gathering. First of all, we're not gonna have any salad. In Vietnam, constant fresh veggies. But please, please, everybody, let's uh, let's dig in. We have the rice wrapper. One of my favorite things. I only discovered that in Denver of this year. It's like I've been living under a culinary rock. Fish is going into the hot pot. Come on, come on. I feel so bad. I, I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't want to start eating. Well, usually because you're a guest, yeah. they like to treat you very well. I, I see that. I'm being treated very well today. I feel very unworthy of this. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. thank you. She said to dip it in tamarind sauce. sauce. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful sauce. I'm the worst rice roll wrapper. Just use your two hands. It might be more useful. There you go. Thank you. I do not want to be the first one to start eating. I mean, this is like my childhood screaming at me. It's this Chinese custom, probably all Asian custom. And it's kind of like a battle because they want me to eat first because I, I, I'm a guest here. I also, but I don't want to be the first one to eat first. It's kind of like fighting for the meal at the end of the meal. Come on. So I'm going to put some in my bowl so I don't double dip. Yeah, no double dipping. We're not savages here. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Mm. The fish is really good. Like, there's no fishiness to it. No. Yeah. It's grilled really well. Perfect. I love how Vietnamese people eat. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting my meat and it's really healthy at the same time. That's true. I feel like I eat a lot of this and there's no guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. When I'm eating a Chinese meal, at the end of the meal, I, I, I feel like I need to roll out of there. Yeah. But this, I feel like I did my body some good. The aunties don't want to be on screen because they're shy. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so grab some greens, take a piece of the fish cake, and this is the sausage dip in. Good. That's a more pungent fish sauce. Mm-hmm. I like it though. I love the pepper that's in these fish cakes. This is one of the best fish cakes I've had. Not just homemade, but mm -hmm. it's ridiculously good. All right, the hot pot is almost ready. 
we're gonna add some of the veggies in there. That goes into the fish sauce. It's a pretty piece of fish. This whole filet, no bones whatsoever. It looks really gentle. One bowl. The aftertaste hit me. Mm. It tastes sort of like a like a swordfish. It's a little fishier than the snakehead fish, but the meat is like a delicious fish steak. It's not the most tender fish, but that's why I said it's sort of like a fish swordfish. It has so much meat. It looks like a pork belly. That broth goes perfectly with this fish. A little sweet, a little sour. Can't wait to try this water spinach. This thing just soaked up all that broth. The broth is really good. You want to drink some broth when eating this fish. The coconut actually brings out the sweetness yeah. in it too. I love that the, the sugary yeah. element of this broth is from coconut. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, like sugary, like nasty It's sugary. natural. It's good. I'm going to try this. Look at this massive squid egg. How is it? I love squid egg. You love it? Are you? It kind of tastes like a mix between a scallop and a beef tidbit. I think for this meal, the hot pot gods definitely smile down upon us. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't wait to eat more veggies. Soak in this broth. And there's a couple things I want to do. First of all, I need some more of that broth. Oh, thank you. This is so good, you guys wouldn't believe. It's so different than any other broth I've had before. I'm taking some water spinach, because God knows I need this. Because after I leave Vietnam, my, my intake of vegetables will probably drop by 80%. And I'm just gonna sneak a little rice noodle in my broth. I'm so sorry that you guys can't go somewhere and order this because I wish you can taste how good this is. And the last thing we haven't tried is uh, rice rolls. And there's two kinds. This is the one with beef. Pork. Pork. And, and mung bean. And the other, banana. This is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mung beans, I usually only have like sweet. Yeah. I'm not salty people. It tastes like a mini zhongzi in Chinese. In the south, southern Chinese, they love sticky rice with meat and This is more like northern Chinese. Sweet, yeah. sticky rice. All right, cheers. Cheers. I definitely prefer this more. It has a little heart here. Oh. So, Brenda, yes. how's it feel being back here? Feels so good. Uh, yeah. Did you cry? No. No? Hmm. I was filled with so much joy that I just couldn't cry. So it's been 10 years. No, eight. Eight years. Yeah. About 10 years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just seeing you and your family, it's, it's, it's very touching. Mm -hmm. though. They're showing love is through food. They don't usually cook like this. No. So this is like huge occasion. You're coming back here. We were supposed to be here yesterday. We missed our flight. But we missed our flight, and we actually had more food than this. But because we couldn't make it, they gave it away. Wait, wait. It's always sad. More food. Yeah. You know, everything on the table, I feel like it's everything you need in life. You need some meat, you need some veggie, you need a little bitterness, you need a little spice. And what I feel like is, is the greatest thing about this meal is that it's delicious, no doubt. Everything is so good, but you, you taste a little extra. You really taste the heart of the people that made this. I mean, this is not just some restaurant where you throw the food down and walk away. You can feel how attentive, how much they want you to enjoy it. And that actually represents itself in the flavor of the dishes. Basically, you're tasting the extra element of love here. The burger's good. You guys ever taste the love? Yeah, this is love right here. I always think food is it's more than just about the flavor. Yeah, sure, it needs to taste good, but mm -hmm. who is prepared by? It's not really just about the intricacy of, of the ingredients itself. It's really about the whole thing. And it could be as simple as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, it could be the best tasting thing in the world. And not saying this is simple because this is, this is crazy complex. Like, I mean, this is so much stuff. But I'm just saying you could taste something extra in all the food. So uh, please thank them so much for, for having me here. and. Uh, I, I'm glad I could, in Chinese we call it gender guang, which literally translates to I'm stealing a little spotlight from you. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you're the star, you're, you're like, this is for you, but I get to take advantage of it a little bit. So I'm really happy I get to be here and share in this reunion and the festivities and of course the food. So thank you so much for having me. You're welcome and they're really happy to have you here. They treat you as a family member and they're really happy that you're eating their food. And I'm going to tell them, uh, please let your family members know, like each and every one of them, how much I appreciate everything. Um, you know, I, I know this is your day, you came here, mm. but still, they did a lot of this for uh, for us as well. Yeah. So thank them so much for us. Um, and this is just such a fantastic feast. Probably the best thing I had in Vietnam, just because, just, I mean, you could feel, if you guys could sit here, mm -hmm. you feel how awesome this whole environment is. And thank you guys so much for watching. And that's it for Vietnam, that's it for the series. So if you enjoyed it, definitely uh, let me know. And maybe in the future, I, we all get to come back here. So finally, until we eat again, we'll see you later. Bye.